the revolution, but all thrill rides are evolutionary. Each ride has a family history. the turn of the century, rides were both complicated and clever. Today's roller coaster can trace its origin to ancient Russian toboggan rides. They were man-made hills covered with ice. The first American coasters were called Scenics, or switchback railways, but friction always slowed them down. Then, in 1904, the Hyatt Roller Bearing Company invented a device that put the roller into roller coaster. New York's Coney Island boasted the first modern roller coaster in the nation, and today, Coney Island Cyclone is rated the best ride in the world by many coaster buffs. I wonder just how safe the super rides really are. Magic Mountain's Joe Meck showed me the system that monitors the Revolution. This is our dispatch panel at the Revolution. Uh, it was really designed by Westinghouse. It's a solid state system, has a logic system to it, whereas on the board in front of you, you will notice there are different lights indicating the positions of the trains on the track. And as each train goes through a block system, it will light up, indicating the train is in that position. And I mentioned block system, and basically a block system works from the standpoint that if a train enters a certain area, another train cannot venture into that area until that first train is totally out of that area. Every ride has been designed to where if something goes wrong, the ride will stop, the ride will set up. And uh, this is how we, we pretty much make sure that all the rides are safe for the guests at all times. And uh, with that kind of system built into every ride, we know that when we operate a ride and we put a guest onto a ride, they're going to come back in a, in a very safe manner. In just three and a half seconds from a complete standing stop, you're going a roaring 55 miles an hour with a force of more than twice the weight of gravity. The 76-foot, 360-degree loop is just about as mind-bending as you'll encounter anywhere. You hang in limbo, and then it starts all over again in reverse. You race backwards through the loop and the station to a second tower, halting momentarily, then back into the station to a grinding, even jarring halt. The whole ride is between 30 and 35 seconds long, but believe me, the thrill lingers on. It's the most amazing thing I've ever been on. That's all I can tell you. Oh, really good. <laughs> Weird things like that. They're fun. <laughs> We're going to go on it again. <laughs> there's really nothing new under the sun, just modifications and improvements, is the corkscrew, a completely different experience from Montezuma's Revenge and in a class all by itself. In 1901, they called a similar ride Loop the Loop. As the 24-car train comes off the crest into the first descent, you're moving at 45 miles an hour. Going through the helix, the train slows to 38 miles an hour. And the ride supervisor told me that even though you may feel like you're in grave danger, if you place a dime in your extended palm, it'll still be there when you return to right side up again. <laughs> 10 million people have ridden the corkscrew in just four years, and when you do, you'll understand why it's so popular.
The Santa Cruz Beach and Boardwalk has been in the fun business since 1904, and the Seaside Park has the look and the feel of nostalgia. This is where your folks, and maybe even their folks, may have ridden the loof carousel or squealed with delight from the top of the giant Ferris wheel. the big outdoor show is the Big Dipper, rated one of the greatest wooden roller coasters in the world, and it didn't take me very long to figure that one out. 22 million screaming coaster fans have ridden the Big Dipper, and even though it's been rolling and twisting along for 55 years, it's never experienced an accident due to mechanical or structural failure. It's a two-train operation, and they've built a lot of sensations into the 2,640 feet of track. The highest hill scores 70 feet, but there's a very special, eerie feeling built into every turn. The Big Dipper is the last of the old wooden roller coasters still operating out here on the West Coast. The man who built it never built another. He didn't have to. He proved his point. Back at Six Flags Magic Mountain, with the giant colossus looming in the background, we talked to the man who literally wrote the book on roller coasters, Gary Cariazzi has ridden every major coaster in the nation, and he caught the fever at the tender age of three. A good roller coaster to me has non-stop action from very start to the end. I think the lift kind of is a suspense builder. From the moment you leave the top of that lift, you shouldn't stop for nothing. By the time you pull, pull into the station, you should be going, hey, what happened there, <laughs> you know? One drop after another, a tight turn here, another drop, maybe a loop if it's a steel coaster. And uh, you should be out of breath by the time you come in. No chance to think. I uh, shot a documentary for television called America Screams. And that was fun because once more we traveled across the country, me and the film crew, and we shot on most of the major roller coasters in the major parks. And it was a lot of fun because we got Vincent Price to be our host. And people don't know that besides being a wine and art expert, he's an expert on roller coasters too. He too is an old roller coaster buff. What about people that are afraid of roller coasters? What advice could you give them? I would say uh, just relax and enjoy it. You know that you're going to come back in safely, and the fear is a hype fear. You know, that's part of the fun. You know that when you go into a horror movie, you're going to come out alive, no matter how frightened you may be. So just try not to think about it. Jump in before you have a chance to change your mind, and just relax and scream a lot. That helps. <laughs> This giant aero plant near Mountain View, and an even larger one in Utah, is a combination outdoor factory and assembly plant, and an indoor research and development laboratory. There isn't time to list all the kinds of rides that aero makes, but just remember a few. Flume rides, runaway trains, dark rides, merry-go-rounds, rub-a-dub rides, and whole transportation systems and roller coasters. From drawing board to tiny working model, to life-size prototype, they do it all right here. When marketing director Larry Newman isn't Just selling rides, he's talking about them. The suspended coaster is a new ride that we have in the yard here. And uh, what it is, virtually, is roller coaster track has been turned upside down using the same chassis. Instead of riding on the track, it rides underneath the track. And we've hung the vehicle suspended from the chassis. Now this has given you a ride that's similar to riding a small airplane versus a roller coaster in that you do not feel the G-loads in your body because the vehicle themselves absorb the G-load. So when you go onto a turn, you get a 110 degree swing out and the whole vehicle swings out. We also have developed, which we're working on now, is a rollover element, which would be an outside course screw, so you would get the effect of doing a barrel roll in an airplane. Uh, our latest ride is the flying turns. And this is a ride that was built in the 20s, made out of wood trough. We've made it out of fiberglass trough, and basically what it is, it's a roller coaster without track. It's on aircraft tires. It goes up a lift, similar to a roller coaster. It drops into this trough. It seeks its own path. It's somewhat similar to what you would consider a bobsled ride, except it is on wheels. 
It uh, goes up around in spirals, a lot of turns, as fast as a roller coaster, but the sensation will be just as much, if not more, because you're inside of a fiberglass trough and you're very low, so you get the feeling that you're traveling twice the speed you are. Uh, another element that we're looking at is a boomerang. And a boomerang is another combination of a corkscrew loop, and I, what I mean by a corkscrew is a element where the train rolls over twice, which most people have ridden in this country, and also a vertical loop where you do a complete 360 turn. Uh, this is a combination where you feel like you're going into a vertical, but before you complete the vertical, you, you veer off to the right, which takes you into a corkscrew effect. So actually, you're upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up, and hitting the direction you just came from. This is one of our newest elements. This will open in Kansas City in 1980. We're talking to a gentleman now who wants the longest, fastest coaster, steel coaster, that is. And it has uh, three elements in it, and you would be upside down six times in the ride. It would be approximately 7,000 feet of track. It'd have a boomerang, a corkscrew, and interlocking loops. So you would experience an upside down sensation six times in three different elements. fun on this series, and I guess I've ridden more rides more times than most people would ride in a dozen years, but I've learned something, too. This is a big, multi-billion dollar business, one filled with financial risks and guessing gambles. It's a serious business that tries to make its most dangerous appearing rides as safe as possible. The ride makers have taken the human body just about as far as it can go with G-forces and stresses, so now even more imagination and design daring will have to take over to razzle dazzle us with illusion and psychology. And if all that doesn't turn you on, and over, and inside out, well, there's always my favorite, the rocking, rollicking, and always remarkable roller coaster. Listen, and tonight, Mary and I are at Knott's Berry Farm. In our first story, we're going to meet a ride on the largest roller coaster in the world. So stay Rides, attractions, music, Knott's Berry Farm is everything you need for a great weekend, including superstars like Marcel Marceau, Debbie Reynolds, Roy Rogers, and Dale Evans, just to name a few. But right now, we're going to meet another entertainer, a man who's been... Jeff Tell, stay tuned now for a ride on the world's biggest roller coaster. Don't go away. That's the corkscrew, folks. California's first upside-down roller coaster. It takes two 360-degree loops, and it's not the kind of ride you want to take on a full stomach. Now we're going to take you for a ride on the world's biggest roller coaster. It's called the American Eagle, and it's in Gurney, Illinois. It's guaranteed to scare the living daylights out of you. PM Magazine's Ken Bell takes us along for the ultimate thrill. What goes up must come down. about to experience the flight of the bat. The bat is the newest ride at Kings Island Theme Park in Kings Island, Ohio. It's the first and only suspended roller coaster in the world. Brian, what do you think the bat's going to be like? Um, I think it's going to be real fun and sometimes a little bit scary. Margaret, are you scared? Kind of, because I've never rode it before. What was it like? It's really exciting because when you go around turns, you go completely sideways. In a suspended coaster, the tracks are above the trains. 
The cars hang down from steel bars attached to the tracks. When you turn a corner, the cars swing out to the side. It is often difficult to see where the next turn is going to take you, but it's a perfect place for the bat to fly. Kelly, did you like it? Yes, I thought it was great. David, how did you like the ride? It's a super ride, and I've never been on anything like it in my life. Reporting for Kids World from Kings Island, Ohio. I can't believe it. Tawny Little's got a crick in her neck. And Martin is scared. So who did they get for this assignment? Johnny Mountain. Oh, Mr. Number Three, Mr. Put Up On. Scared? So what's there to be scared about? So what's the big deal? It's just a meeting of the roller coaster buffs international in here. My name's Frank Gordon, Roller Coaster Buffs International. Very happy to have you here. Come on in, come on in. This is a blueprint of the Kennywood Racer. It's at Kennywood Park in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was okay, by John so Miller. first impressions are deceiving. Fact is, I'm learning a lot from the coaster buffs. Tony and Ann don't know what they're missing. These guys even know the history of coasters. They started with giant Russian ice slides in the 16th century. In 1870 in Pennsylvania, an old coal mining car was converted into a downhill thrill ride. The French put wheels on sleds in 1900. Then things really got rolling. But the buffs say we're in a roller coaster renaissance now. And since 1972, a lot of terrific roller coasters have been built, and they know the biggest and the baddest. I lost my top. But you lost your... Other than that, You lost was, your top? Yeah, it was so rough, I sort of lost it a few times, but it was, I pulled it up. It was okay. Nobody <laughs> saw it. Other than that, it was a good ride. The Texas Cyclone was a really good coaster. First day we were married, we rode the Texas Shockwave, which is a double loop coaster, which is at Six Flags Over Texas, and uh, that's where actually we went on our honeymoon. The Screaming Eagle was a coaster that was built by John Allen of the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, who was a, a man dedicated to building quality coaster rides. He uh, often refused some jobs because they only wanted measurements as opposed to the quality of the ride. So uh, any coaster that you can find that has the John Allen name on it, quality ride without even riding it. There's an awesome mile and a half long coaster at Kings Island in Cincinnati called The Beast. Its first drop is 135 vertical feet into a tunnel. And Kings Island has a brand new coaster called the Bat that hangs from the track and swings free. This is the flywheel clutch mechanism. It is a 17,500 pound flywheel driven at 825 revolutions per minute and connected into a clutch, which, when activated, drives the bullwheel 
that has the cable attached to it, which runs the train into the loop. The coaster buffs have staked out all our Southern California coasters. Second for second, Knott's Montezuma's Revenge is probably the most intense ride in Southern California. The trip time is approximately 35 to 36 seconds, depending upon the weight of the train. We've been open since 1978, and we've carried a little over 7,400,000. Knott's also has a little gym called the Corkscrew. Corkscrew is the first of its type, and it was put up here in May of 1975. You go down a dip into two helix, where the train goes upside down twice, and back into the station. It's approximately 75 seconds long. There are three at Disneyland. The Matterhorn bobsled ride is the oldest. All of the Disneyland coasters are steel, and they all have themes. Space Mountain is an enclosed coaster loaded with lights and sound, and Big Thunder is a runaway mine train. Six Flags Magic Mountain has the other two Southern California roller coasters, the Steel Revolution, and our only wooden coaster, the Awesome Colossus. I, I think it's a great ride. I love riding it, and just looking at it, it's beautiful. It's a work of art. You know, you go buy it on the freeway, and there it is, and you just... You just, I don't know, I just have to stand there and even just stare at it. It's just a gorgeous piece of art. It's one of those coasters that really gets your blood going when you ride it. And uh, I have to grit my teeth. Well, this has all been fun. I've enjoyed it very, very much, guys. And I've learned a lot about roller coasters. So uh, I guess I better be getting going now. So I'm having some fun. So we'll see you guys later, okay? Okay, okay thanks for coming. Well, hold on just a minute, Johnny. Hold on just a minute. I'd like to present you with uh, an honorary membership card. Oh, great. We'd like to make you an honorary member of Roller Coaster Buffs International uh, in appreciation for you coming today. Oh, well, thank you very, very much. <laughs> uh, also, there's just one other thing. What's that? Uh, we'd like to have you join us on an outing today as oh. part of the initiation. Like to a picnic or something like that. <laughs> well, kind of, yes. We're all going out to Magic Mountain and we're going to ride Colossus several times, and that'll be your initiation. No, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> they open the park just for us. And the roller coaster buffs probably wouldn't let me leave even if I tried. Besides, how bad can one of the world's largest double track wooden roller coasters be? It's only a mile long. It only has 14 hills. The ride only lasts three and a half minutes. The first drop is only 115 feet. And you only hit 62 miles an hour. <laughs> Flags Magic Mountain. This is Johnny Mountain. Oh, come on! Now, it's not over yet. We gotta go ride the Revolution. Come on, right. guys! Get what? Yeah. No! Gonna... No! Come on! Yes. Oh. Tony, and I'm gonna get you for this. I'll get you. I'll get you. Hey. Here's all that 